Hey guys, it's me, 8044. Today, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about Alavis Nil FC Barcelona 1. And oh my goodness me, guys, this was a very, very tough match to watch. And man, I, I don't even know where to go from here, guys, because my goodness me, guys, it was a miracle that we scored. It was a miracle. And like I said before, guys, this team is difficult to support. And it's it's important that we as fans have to stick with this team. Because I know it's easy for us to change teams, you know, to go to Paris Saint-Germain, to go to Chelsea, Liverpool, Bayern, etc. But we have to stay united. We have to stay united and we just have to keep our expectations realistic. Because this season is really, for me, top four. If we do not get top four, this season will be a bust. Unless we win the Europa League. Because right now, guys, for me, it's either top four or win Europe League. Because I don't think both is going to happen. I said that before, guys, that both will not happen. It's either or, it's either of the two. Okay? Because, like I said, guys, this was a very, very abject performance. A very, very difficult game. And we got the job done. And we got to keep this in context here, guys. Alaviz is a team that's in 19th place. 19th place. And we just about managed to scrape a win over them. Now, the good news for us is that teams around us in the table did draw points. As you guys can see right here, guys, uh, Raya Valcano, they lost today at their stadium. Sociedad drew against Getafe. Um, Valencia lost. Se excuse me, Sevilla tied. And the only the only team that really benefited around us was Real Betis. They're the only team that was benefiting from this and you guys can see right here is that we are one point away from top four and keep in mind guys our next match in the league is against atletico madrid that is going to be a huge game because like like i said before guys if we potentially win that match we'll be two points clear but if we draw that match keeps it as it is but if we lose that match ooh, that could be very tough because like i said guys if atletico madrid wins we would have a four point gap and that's not a very bad gap and it it's so sad that if we had just won against Granada or basically any of those draws we had, just converted one of those two wins, we would be in the top four right now. But, you know, we just have to stick with that. You know, like I said, there's so many draws that have been killing us. And like I said, guys, the top four is looking very, very competitive indeed. And you guys can see how great Real Betis have been this season. And maybe they're the team to look past. Because if you guys look at the top, look at the current form right now, we actually have the best current form in the league. We haven't lost a match. Us and Sevilla haven't lost a match in a long time in the last five games. That I find very interesting. Every other team in the league have lost a match. So that's gonna be interesting. But keep in mind, guys, our next match, that Atletico Madrid could change things massively. But we'll talk more about that in a future video. As for the lineup for this match, guys, Barcelona. This was pretty much an expected lineup. Ter Stegen started as we expected. Alba, Oral, PK, Dest. De Jong, Busquets, Pedri, Abde, Luke De Jong, and Fran Torres. This is almost the same 11 that I almost predicted. The only difference being is that Danny Alves didn't start. And that might have been the big surprise and that Sergio Dest started ahead of Danny Alves. And I think that's more of just, not necessarily him quality-wise, I think that's more of just because Danny Alves needs some rest. He has, he has played two games back-to-back. -back. He uh, He's played a lot of games recently, and I just think that this was the perfect time for him to rest. You know, and so Dest, in, in, you know, and I think Dest had an okay game. Wasn't very good, in my opinion, nor very bad, per se. But yeah. Um, and like I said, though, everything else is pretty much expected. So let's go and look at the big chances. Let's look start with that first first half. So the first big opportunity was a Luke de Jong chance. He had that chance right at the beginning, guys. And that was an early, early chance. And for me, that was a chance that we should have scored. Should have scored, indeed. And then Busquets gave the ball away. And this is where I'm like, oh, God. He made a terrible mistake here. And basically, um, and yeah, I'm talking about this one right here. Luke De Jong, that was the chance I was talking about. Um, and then, like I said, Busquets makes a terrible pass indeed to one of the um, Alavis players. They pounce on it and they should have scored, but it was saved or it was, I think it was cleared, I think. So yeah. Anyways, then Torres had a shot there that was agonizingly close. And then I think Busquets had a shot from target. And then that, there was a chance right there, just at the end of the first half. Alavis had was 1v1, Rahelio, and Ter Stegen pulls off a brilliant save. 
Uh, uh, actually, it wasn't a brilliant save, but he, he Ter Stegen calmly catches it with his hand. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh my goodness me, guys. That was a big chance. And at halftime here, I was like, oh God, you know. And like, as you guys can see right here, guys, the commentary is saying right here, it's nil no halftime following a tight half, bars them down with the possession. But as a result of many chances, small opportunities fell to PK Luke de Young, but weren't able to capitalize. Instead, the best chance of the first half let, fell to Pons and struck a hot time, but his 12 yard strike was straight at Ter Stegen. Bars would be concerned with that first half performance. And you would expect them to make changes shortly. And that is where I would say, yeah, definitely. Because like I said before, guys. I've said this before, guys. You can have all the possession you want. You can have all the possession you want. But it just if you're not clinical at the possession, it matters nothing. And that's why I've said before to people is that I honestly prefer being more effective than being pretty. You know, now, obviously, Barcelona, you like to do both. In an ideal world, both is practical. But... What's more effective is to get the win. And that's what I you have to admire about other teams like Real Madrid, for instance. They always want to win and no matter what. You know, Chelsea, for instance, you know, they're not so set with the style. There are some teams that are just out there just to wanting to win. And you can admire them. And that's one of the downsides of this whole playing the style thing is that when it's not working, there isn't really a plan B. And it's to my surprise, Xavi didn't make any changes at halftime, which I thought was very, very interesting, very shocking indeed. Since Joe Solo had a chance right there from 30 yards, sails wide. It's been more or less the same second half. Um, Barcelona dominated position, but not least some chances. Uh, then another missed opportunity for the host, Rio Buons. They had a great um, uh, counterattack there. And, of course, they missed it. And so, like I said, guys, if Alaves had, like, let's say, Lewandowski, Benzema, or Sala, those kind of players, basically anyone that's better than these current players, they would probably have scored one or two goals, maybe even three goals because of how poor we – how terrible we were defensively. Luke De Jong appears to be clean, but, you know. Um, and, you know, and this was a chance right here. This was a chance right at the 62nd minute. I'm like, how the or did you, why did you take so long to shoot? You know, but it wouldn't have counted anyway. It was offside, so still, you know, and look at this chance right here from Pedri, from Luke De Jong, and straight up Pacheco. I'm like, Luke De Jong, man, you have been one of our best players this year, but you're still not great, you know. And, oh, my goodness. Uh, then, I got to commend Javi for here because he took up Abde, who, in my opinion, had a really bad game. He wasn't very good by all means. Nico Gonzalez came on, who I thought was really, really a good change. And then, yeah, Miguel de Fuente came on. And then, PK had the chance right there. I'm like, wow. You know? But then there was a huge p appeal for penalty for Alves. And this is where, I believe, Rihoyo nutmegs Frankie Dion inside the box before the midfield box is patched the ball. Rio goes down the butt. The referee green moves unmoved. And like I said, guys, it was very, very crazy. Then Farron Jutkala came on uh, for Luke Dion, who I thought was a good change. And then finally, finally, we score, guys. Frankie Dion gets the goal. Barca takes the lead as Alba cuts inside and curls a beautiful cross to the back post. Torres latches on and squares it to... Cross the goal with the unmarked Frank De Jong, who's waiting to slot in from six yards. There was some controversy as Young was initially offside, but when the cross came in, but the referees judged that De Young was onside when Torres intervened, and the goal stands. You know, and so, like I said before, guys, it was a big, big goal, guys. And, you know, um, Tomei Maya came on, Long Lake came on just to see out the game. And then Alavis had a chance right at the end to equalize from the corner, but it was it was saved by Ter Stegen. And like I said, guys, this was a very, very difficult game for us. And man, like I said, guys, we just got the win. And that's all that really matters in the day because, my goodness me, guys, this was a crucial win. I'm going to keep things in context here, guys. Alaves is a team that's in 19th place. 19th place, as I said. And we struggled to beat this team. We're seeing how the levels this team is and that we were so good against Real Madrid. But all of a sudden, after the Real Madrid game, Athletic Bilbao and Alaves, we put them so shockers. You know, even against Granada too, I would say. Like basically, the only good performance we had in this month was against Real Madrid. Every other game of this month was simply poor. Simply poor to say the least. And let's talk about some of the players in the day because some of these players were not good. Busquets for me, very, very disappointed from him. I know he's still a, one of the captains and I respect him as a player, but geez, we have to move past him. We have to replace him this summer. Because the amount of times he gave the ball away in the midfield is very dangerous. And there were some great opportunities Alavis could have scored from there. Frankie Diong, he wasn't very good too. You know, and like I said before, guys, I just think that for Frankie Diong in particular, I think he's a great player, but I just don't think he's used to the system. 
And for me, I think if we want to get the best out of Frankie Young, we have to play him in a double pivot. I think we have to play him in a double pivot. But you guys know in Barcelona, they don't do a double pivot. We just do like the 4 through 3 So I think if he played in a 4 2 3 one, he'd be so much more better. Anyhow, um, for me, Alba for me was still not great. Dest was not that great in my opinion. Abde was really poor. I didn't like his game. Torres for me was very poor for most of the game. Luke de Jong was not that great as well. And like I said, most of these players for me weren't very good. And like I said before, guys, we just got the win. And for me, the man of the match has this game has to be Pedri. The, the importance he has to this team is quite remarkable. And I'm going to say this right now, guys. This might come as a surprise. He is the best midfielder we have at Barcelona. The best midfielder we have. Because the amount of through balls, the amount he contributes to our attack is insane. And he's just 18 years old. He is so young, guys. He is actually 19 years old. He is so young, guys. He actually is so important for this team. And imagine that we didn't have this kind of player in our team. Because my goodness me, guys, that amount of through balls, the amount of ball recoveries he makes in the midfield is so important. And I got to give it up to Pedri, man. He's one of our most important players. And it's such a shame that he's 19 years old. Because I can guarantee you right now, guys, if it, I wish he was a bit older. Because like I said, that for me is a huge negative. It's, it's not necessarily negative on his self. It's not his fault. But it's just that... I don't want to over rely on him like we did last season. Last season, he played around 70 games, I believe. And I really don't want him to go through that kind of injury process where he's going to miss uh, half the season because we, we see how this team is really underperforming in the midfield. And for me, that's a huge disappointment. And, you know, like I said before, guys, for me, Pedri, for me, is so important for this team. He's the best midfielder in this team right now. And like I said before, guys, for this Barcelona team in particular, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do a lot better than this because, like I said, guys, we got some tough games coming up in the month of February. We have Atletico Madrid at home. We have Espanol on the road. Then we have the Napoli game at home. Valencia on the road. Napoli away. Athletic Club at home. These six matches are gonna be tough. There's gonna not gonna be an easy match in this one. And I wouldn't be surprised that we don't get we we don't we may not even win a single match in that month. Maybe that Espanol game. But the other games, oh, it's going to be tough, guys. It's going to be tough as heck. Because keep in mind, guys, we only have three home matches, two of which are going to be at home. Now, there is a Rio game that could potentially happen in the month of February, depending on how the schedule is. But I don't even know, man. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I don't think it's going to be in February. The games are way too close. Maybe we could see a game, like, being pushed here, you know, like uh, like I said, for us. But, um, you know, it could be really interesting indeed. Let me check something real quick. Let me check the COVID array, the quarterfinals. Let me check that. When does those games? February 2nd, February 3rd. So there is a good possibility. Oh, yeah, we can't. Yeah, Ryo. Oh, yeah, never mind. So, like I said, guys, it's going to be very, very important that we have to do better than this. Because, like I said before, guys, this kind of performance right here is not acceptable by any means. But, like I said, we got the three points. That ultimately is what really matters. So, all you guys to comment down below your guys' thoughts on this match. Because, my goodness me, guys. There's a lot of things I could say in this match, you know, and Justolo had a right good chance right at the 80th minute, I think. And, you know, just before De Jong scores, didn't take it. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Remember, if you're new around here, subscribe. If you're new around here, like this video as well. Help us the channel grow. Comment down below your thoughts. Check out me and my other positive. This is the description below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.